So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here, and this is another episode of Backroads Arizona Mechanical. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a install and review of a Super ATV half inch thick ARMW skid plate made of polyethylene, basically a plastic skid plate on my 2019 Razor Velocity Turbo S XP4. One of the key reasons I went with this skid plate over a metal or aluminum is I feel I'm gonna slip over obstacles easier and I have already bottomed out, as you can see by the pictures, and scratched up the bottom of this thing pretty good in the times I've been out already. So I do think this is a good quality skid plate and I no longer worry about bottoming out with the risk of damaging something. One downside of the skid plate is it is over 100 pounds. So you are adding a lot of weight by putting the skid plate on your razor. So that is something to think about. In this video, I'm gonna go over helpful hints that I use to get this skid plate installed. And I'm also gonna tell you the mistakes I made so they won't happen to you. So let's get to it. So in the instructions, they actually recommend putting the razor on its side to install this roll cage. I did not do that. More power to you if you wanna flip it on its side. I don't think it's necessary in order to install this skid plate. So the first step to this was removing the factory skid plate. Using my impact, I removed all the old screws. Keep those old screws and washers handy because you will need them for later. And I did do this with the razor just sitting on the ground. However, halfway through this project, I put it up on a trailer to make it easier to do, to give me more clearance. However, I do feel you could do it without jacking it up or lifting it up on anything if you absolutely had to. So here's a quick view of the old factory skid plate. I wanted to show you this so you could see the damage as this razor is just over a year old and you can see how many times I've bottomed out on it. So obviously the most damage that was done to the factory skid plate was on the middle section from being close to being high centered and getting stuck a couple times. The front section also had some damage and the back section did look pretty good still. So you install the back piece of the skid plate first and there is two bushings that go on the back two screws to space it down a little bit. Once I got the back up and in place with a couple screws, it was easy to push the front part of that skid plate up into place and get the rest of them started. In the instructions, it will tell you whether to tighten down the screws all the way or leave them a little bit loose. And I did make that mistake on a couple of them too. So pay attention to the instructions as far as that goes. Another thing I messed up on is I was using all the screws that came in the kit, not realizing that you need to reuse the ones that were in the factory skid plate for some of the holes and that is noted in the instructions as well. After that I went ahead and put the middle section of the skid plate in doing the same basic concept. The instructions are not bad about telling you what to do even though I made a couple of mistakes that were clearly stated in the instructions. So in the kit there's some push on clips that act as nuts and those basically snap into place on a metal plate that go between the center part of the skid plate and the outer part of the skid plate to hold the two together. Make sure you have these in the right direction because I installed all of these clips upside down and had to take them all back off and redo it. If you do happen to put these on incorrectly, you can get them back off. You'll see this little clip under here. You take a pick or a small screwdriver, stick it underneath that part of that clip, leverage it up, and it should slide off pretty easily. At this point, I decided I wanted to get a little bit more clearance to make it easier for me to work underneath. So I went ahead and pulled my razor up on one of my trailers and then took away the ramps. Make sure to chalk your wheels with something so there's no chance of it rolling back while you're underneath it. So you wanna take that metal bracket and slide it up underneath the center part of the skid plate. Then put the bolts in that and tighten those down. And then the outer part of the skid plate attaches to that metal bracket as well. So I was able to put all these pieces up by myself using my legs to help hold it. But obviously two people doing this would make it easier. So the other thing you'll have to do to install this skid plate is go into the frame with the tech screw. Now I tried just running the tech screws in without pre-drilling a hole and that did not go very well. After doling out a couple of the tech screws and getting frustrated, the instructions did recommend using a 5 30 seconds drill bit. And that's what I ended up doing and made things go much easier. When pre-drilling the holes, it's best to just do one or maybe two at a time 
because as you tighten the tech screws up into place, the skid plate is gonna shift a little bit and you wanna make sure you're dead center in each of the holes when drilling. When installing the outer skid plates, you're gonna wanna leave the bolts on the inside of that plate a little loose because it might help you close this gap and get the tech screws started. I ended up using my feet to push up on that part of the skid plate while getting the tech screws started. Once getting them started, I tightened them up and it closed the gap without a problem. Make sure you install the splash guards before putting the outer edge screws in the skid plate. Otherwise you will not be able to get them on and have to loosen them back off like I had to here. Once getting those splash guards back in, I was able to put the screws on the outer edge back in and tighten it down. So that was pretty much it for what was underneath. So I went ahead and took the razor off the trailer because the only thing left to put on was a very small piece in the front of the razor. I had to take my tow hook off of the front of the razor and then there was an adapter plate that pushed up into place. This did get a little tricky. So the bolts that came in this kit to go through that adapter plate ended up being too long in my opinion. They were really close to touching my front differential and I ended up taking them back out and putting a little bit shorter bolt that I had in place of them. Using a flexible magnet, I held the nut on the back side while starting the bolts. Now this is just my opinion and it might have never caused a problem, but I just felt better with the shorter bolts. So here's a picture of the clearance between the diff and the end of the bolt with the ones that I put in that were shorter. That gap was a lot tighter with the ones they sent in the kit. And once adding that adapter plate plus my aftermarket bumper up front, the bolts that were originally for the tow hitch weren't quite long enough. They did not go all the way through the nuts. So I went and got some longer bolts for that. And that could have just been because of my aftermarket bumper. Putting these bolts back in was a pain also. There is a bracket that holds the two nuts together. Then using my magnet again, I held that bracket into place behind the bumper got them started and then tightened them down. Hopefully you come up with a better way to get this part of the install done because I struggled with it and there was some cuss words and frustration involved. Here's a quick view of the longer bolts that I put through. The ones that were in it did not go past the nut. Once you get that very annoying process done, all you have to do is put the front part of the skid plate up into place. In the instructions, it gives you two different options as far as mounting from the skid plate to the adapter plate, either tech screws or bolts and nuts, depending on the application and aftermarket accessories. The tech screws would not work for my application, so I ended up using the bolts and nuts. However, I ended up using mine again because the ones that came in the kit were a little long and would have been leveraging against the frame. All that was left after that was to pre-drill and put the tech screws in the back part of the front piece of the skid plate. Make sure you check your clearance on your tech screws going up by the differential to make sure none of those are getting close to rubbing either. And then after everything was in place, I went over all of them one more time to make sure they were all tight. And that's about all there is to it, guys, to install one of these Super ATV skid plates. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, hit like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a wide variety of do-it-yourselves going from anything from mechanical to electrical to furniture builds, storage ideas, etc. I've also got other videos about my razor, including wiring your accessories, ride height adjustments, and others as well. My whole concept of my channel is to save you guys money by doing it yourselves. Hope to see you next time. Later.